Hi, my name is Nicola and I'm from Cake Craft World and I'm going to show you how to make these realistic pumpkin cakes. So let's get going. The first thing I'm going to show you what to do is how to create this brilliant wood effect on the cake board. And the best way to do that is to use this lovely embossing sheet. However, if you don't have one of these at home, you can always use a toothpick and drag and score and make marks naturally across your sugar paste. I've already covered my cake board, it's a 10 inch round board with um, some sugar rolled fondant and I'm just going to quickly show you how easy it is to create this textured effect. Right, so the first thing you want to do is just lay your sheet on the actual icing. I'm just going to use my smoother. You can use your hands, but I like to use a smoother to get an even effect. Okay lift it off you can see it's a really lovely texture and I'm also going to show you how to use it without the smoother as well so all you do is just you push down make sure you get all around the edges as well I'm just going to check it yep that's nice that's lovely before you start adding any kind of colouring to the board to create that really lovely natural effect, it's best to actually leave this to set and dry for at least a couple of hours. But I'm going to go straight into showing you how to just add colour very quickly. So to do this, I've chosen a selection of blossom dust, which are edible powder colours. And I've used a chocolate brown, I've used a nutkin brown, a black and a champagne, it's like a cream. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to randomly add some dust of all different colours across my ball just to lift the textures. So, start here. When you're actually adding colour, if you want to get a really lovely natural effect, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the whole point of creating anything that you want that's more realistic. So just simply drag your brush across the board and you can see that it's gradually highlighting all the grains and the, of the design. Now I've added all the other colourings, I'm just adding a touch of cream as well, just to lift up some of the detail. Don't need to really add very much. Just gives it a bit more of an oldie worldy look. A lot of the motions that I've been using is a bit like a criss-cross effect. So you're going between the grooves and across the grain as well. I think we are almost there now. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to fix the colour. There's two ways you can do this. You can either use cool boiled water and simply drag it completely over your board and it'll give you a slight sheen, but you'd need to leave it to set for at least a day. But I'm going to show you how to use it with um, a rejuvenated spirit, which is equivalent to clear spirit, which you can also use vodka or gin as well. So simply, all you need to do is use quite a wide brush. You dip your brush into this liquid. And basically, all you're going to do is just completely paint and drag all the way down. Simple as that. And this kind of gives you a really nice natural finish. There we are. That looks great. A lovely natural kind of wood effect. It's brilliant. So what you need to do now, you need to let that set for a couple of hours or 24 hours before we even attempt to put any type of cake or decoration onto the board. 
Now I'm going to show you how to carve the cake. The great thing about pumpkins is that they don't have to be perfect and the more irregular you carve it, the more natural it will look. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is just carve a little bit around the sides. I've used three sandwich tins of uh, cake here and it's a seven inch. I've already filled the cake as well with buttercream or frosting. So all you need to do is just go turn your cake round and just keep gently carving. You don't want to carve away too much. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip it over. Like so. And what I've used, I've already attached it to a smaller cake ball, which is roughly four inches. And this will help as a guide when we go to actually cut away for the base of the pumpkin. So again, all we want to do is just gently cut along the... I've used Madeira cake because it's firmer and it's a lot easier when you're actually cutting your novelty shapes. Okay, that's great. So as you can see, I'm starting to get that curved and that dome at the moment. So I'm just going to turn it around again. So I'm just going to use my board. Just going to take that off. And the important thing when you go carving novelty cakes is that you should always stand back and just check the shape of your cake to make sure that you're actually happy with it. You can actually do this design in any size cake you like. It doesn't have to be the seven inch, it could be smaller, it could be bigger. I'm just going to use this as a guide on top. So I know that I need to just cut away a bit more. I might actually just cut the top a bit because we need to actually dip straight into the center. There we are like so. Because some pumpkins are actually slightly squashed. That's it. Okay. Just going to carve a bit more down. Right, the next thing to do is that you want to actually create the grooves in between. So I'm just going to carve sections in to try and give the, the segments. So just do little bits at a time. like so and you're starting to get that lovely groove so you want to do that for the tops and the bottom so it's even you can do as many as these as you like it's all in like i said earlier the more irregular it is the more natural it will be let's just start off with slight grooves to begin with and then we'll work on them as we go along Okay, so that's the top. I'm just going to use a smaller knife. I'm just going to slightly make a little dent in the centre. This will help you guide you later on when you come to putting your stem on the top of the pumpkin. So lift those out. That's it. We can always push that further down using a small rolling pin once we've iced the cake later on. Right, so now I'm just going to work a bit going round the base as well. I don't want the grooves to be as deep, so I'm only going to do it slightly. Because when we go to cover it with the icing, you can add more detail and more grooves as you go along. There we are, I'm really happy with that shape. So I'm just going to have a clear up and then I will cover the whole cake with some frosting. 
Now on to coating the cake with some buttercream or frosting. We only want to give it a very thin coating, but it's to give a nice base for when you actually attach your icing and when you go to smooth all around the edges. I'm using a ready-made frosting. It's one that you don't need to put in a fridge either, so it's very good. But you can use any type you like. So what we're going to do is just spread a little bit as we go around the cake. Take your time when you're doing this. There's no rush for it because you can, if you're rushing it too quickly, you can probably drag some of the cake off and you don't want to do that. So probably best to just start from the base and work your way up. Always easier to start from the bottom, especially when you're working with novelty cakes it gives you what the tip is basically you can hold on to the top of the cake as you're moving it around because once you cover the top it's very difficult and you can get in real mess so just carry on doing this a little bit of time once this is all completely covered and you're happy with it I would recommend chilling your cake or even put it in the freezer for at least 15 minutes. It just helps firm up your cream before you go and lay your actual icing on top. You get a really good finish afterwards. So I'm almost there. There we are. That's enough. Right, so I'm going to pop this in the fridge for a little while and then I'll be back and I'll show you how to cover your cake with icing. I've just taken my cake out of the freezer or the fridge, whatever one you would like to use, and it's now ready to be covered with icing. I've already rolled out my ready roll icing. It's roughly to a thickness of five millimeters thick. You don't really want it any thicker than that because it, it can drag when you go to lift it onto the cake. So to get this really smooth after using my rolling pin, I've used my smoother just to remove any kind of air bubbles that there might be. It also gives a nicer finish, finish to the icing. So what we're going to do, we're going to lift this up and we're going to bring the cake in. I'm just going to bring it in here. We just want to gently lift it and lay it over your cake. So we're going to have to work quite quickly just to tuck it in. I actually use roughly 750 grams of sugar paste. This allows me to cover the cake very nicely, especially this size cake anyway. So, I mean, by the time you've carved it and cut it down, it's probably between a seven and a six inch cake. Just gradually work your way around it, tucking it in under the base a little bit. Then just using your hands just to smooth and create the nice lines that you want to achieve to create the pumpkin. I mean, this is a lovely bright orange I've used, but it's still lighter, highlighting all the shades in the shadows on the actual cake. Because as you've got the grooves, it gives you that texture. But we are also going to add colour and paint to it to add that more depth and realism to it. So just carry on tucking around with your hands. Lift it out as well if you need to. And just gradually push and tuck. And then also gradually using your fingers again to create some of these lovely grooves. Okay. Just gradually do this bit, a little bit of time, because you don't want to cut too much away. Just get rid of some of this around here. Uh, that looks great. Right, so the next thing we can do, you can either use your smoother, and what you can do is just push in the base at the bottom, like so, and you just push in slightly to give a bit more then you just go up like that there's different ways you can actually do it just to give a bit few more ridges if you like 
attack again and go up like that. Right, I'll do a few more grooves in a minute, but I'm just going to show you to make this a bit more pronounced in the centre, is to use the small end of a rolling pin. And what we're going to do is just push in to create that central part for where you want to place your pumpkin stem, like so. Just like that. You can use the end of your finger if you want to, but I've got this. Right, so now I want to make these grooves a bit more stronger. So I'm going to use this bulb tool. And basically what you do, you just take it from the centre and you push down. And what we're also going to do, I'm going to use this point to go around the base just to push and tuck some of the areas, just to give a bit more detail. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just going to push. Again, if you want to tidy up any of the base, just use your knife to cut away any excess. And then use this to tuck, to create a bit of shape. Next thing to do is to actually leave it to set for a few hours or overnight. Before we start painting, I'm just going to lift this off and I'm going to attach it to the cabled. To do this, I'm just using a little bit of raw lysine. And I'm just going to slide my palette knife under here. Just going to bring this in. Make sure it's lifting. There we are, lovely. Now we just want to position this. We kind of want it sitting slightly back because when we add all the other decorations later. So for the stem, I'm using Satina Spring Green Sugar Paste and I'm just going to roll it into a cone. To start with. And I'm also going to use my smoother again. Obviously, this particular one at the moment is a bit too big, but we can cut this down. But it's just generally to give you an idea of the shape. And then we're going to let's just check that it fits. That's quite nice actually. So lift that off again. And I'm just going to cut it at a slight angle, I think. It's when you go to cut things naturally from plants, you tend to cut with a slight angle. Right, I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing we want to do is that we want to add some grooves and some textured lines. So what you can do is just push down to start with and fatten out the, the base of your stem, like so. I'm just gonna use a few different tools. You could actually use the edge of your knife and just keep scoring and going across this way. But I also quite like using a cutting wheel as well. So I'm just going to do this. And through this as well, but you kind of, it naturally goes in and out, giving you different types of depths within the ice in. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can really rough it up if you want to. Okay, I think that looks about right. So the next thing you want to do, just push it down a little bit more again, twist it. And we also want to kind of give it a bit of a curve. So you just want to like twist it a little bit, however you want it to sit, as well as pinch out a little bit of the actual top. So it looks like the inside of it is just shrinking a little bit when it's drying out. I'm just going to lift this up and check to see how it fits. And, I could just, and it fits nicely. It's lovely. So I'm just going to push a bit more down the bottom just to flatten it out a little bit more and give it a little twist. Yeah, that's great. So what we need to do now is just use some edible glue, sugar glue, just to secure it. 
Lovely. Add a few more grooves. Let's just move this bit here. In here. Just add a bit more detail again to the base of the pumpkin. Just looks a bit more natural. Now for the colour, I'm using poppy red for the pumpkin, maybe a little bit of orange as well. I'm also using gooseberry and I will also be mixing a little bit of autumn leaf as well to colour the stem. I might also add a little bit of white mixed with the autumn leaf just to create a lovely soft creamy colour too. So I've got a really big brush. This is really great for colouring big areas very, very quickly, especially with the red and the orange because if you use something that's too small, it just creates lots of tiny little stripes and you don't want that. So again, to mix the colours, using a clear spirit. I'm using Rejuvenator. Mix it in there. You could use cold boiled water again if you wanted to, but I always find when you use a clean spirit like gin or vodka, it really makes the colours stand out more vibrant. So... Just going to mix a little bit in here because you want to start off with adding a lighter colour and then making it darker as we go around. Might add a bit of orange in there as well. There we go, lovely. Okay. Then we're just going to dip this on. Just simply do that all the way around the cake. Might have to make a bit more actually. That's it. Yeah, that's great. I'm just going to use a smaller brush just to get right down the bottom. So I couldn't quite get there. Right now I'm going to move on to the stem. So I've got some really nice gooseberry green here. Just going to mix that up. You just basically want to just lightly drag the colour in around so the colouring just naturally highlights all those little lines that you picked up earlier just to add a bit of the textures and the grooves which is really nice. Okay, that's good. Just going to add a bit more depth to it. That looks great. Right, so the last thing I want to do is where you cut the stem of the stalk, it tends to dry out, so I just need to make that a little bit paler. So I'm going to mix a little bit of my white blossom tint powder. I'm just going to add a little bit of the autumn leaf just to make it a bit creamier. You can always add more white afterwards. What you want to do is just dab it on like that, as I say. That's great. For the eyes and nose, I've just rolled out some black icing and I'm going to cut them out. It's up to you how big or small you actually want them to be. It's 
just cut out our nose as well. Okay. And the best way to attach them is to use a bit of sugar glue. I'm just going to turn it towards me for a sec. I think. Go there. There you go, all it needs now is some glaze spray and it'll help bring up all the colour in and give it a nice shine. Lovely, there you are. If you want to make these lovely autumn leaves, I'm going to show you how. I'm using this fantastic Karen Davies mould and it's really easy to use. I've pre-coloured my modelling paste and I'm using Satina 3-in-1 which is fantastic. All you need to do is simply knead your, your actual paste and make sure it's not too sticky. And also you want to dust your mould with a little bit of cornflour powder as well. So simply get your paste, I'm going to do the smaller one. The trick is not to actually use too much paste. So what we want to do is just roll into a sausage, press down like so, dab a bit more cornflour powder. I'm just going to roll on top a little bit and then cut away with a palette knife. Do take your time with this, because some of these moulds can be a little bit fiddly. If you get any tiny little imperfections, you can always add a bit more paste and just push it in. Or to be honest, when you're actually looking at autumn leaves, it's really nice when you have broken leaves and holes in them because it adds to the naturalness of it. And all you have to do is just pop it out like so, squeeze it together, then use a sponge to just sit and dry like so. I've made these beforehand and I'm just going to show you how to add a bit of colour. If you want to know how to make all the lovely different colours on this cake I've done beforehand, we do actually have a separate YouTube video on how to colour and make the autumn leaves. I'm just going to show you how to colour the greens. So let's just mix the colour up again. I'm going to also add a bit of yellow as well. Just simply brush around the sides and on top and just let the colour fall into the actual leaf. The more random it is, the more natural it will be. Just add a bit of green. Yeah. I'm just going to add a bit of autumn leaf as well, just to create that as if it's just changing colour. I think I'll add a bit of orange. Okay, once you've coloured all your leaves and your berries, 
then just let them set and dry I'd say a couple of hours and then you can just attach them to your cake there we are that's lovely here are some I made yesterday all pre-coloured so let's just move this here the idea is just to kind of scatter the leaves as if it's just naturally fallen into place. So, whoops. I'm going to put this one on the top. Just going to play a little bit of how I want to position them. I mean, you can attach as many berries and leaves as you like. Just going to put tiny little ones down the base. Last thing I'm going to add is a ribbon and these really funky little plastic spiders. It kind of really adds that effect for like Halloween. So all you need to do is like put the odd little ones around. So maybe place one up here. There's one down there. Great. Just put one round on here as well. Lovely. I've already got some double-sided sticky tape attached to the board. I'm just going to peel this away. I've got a lovely brown ribbon just to finish it off. Just want to be a bit careful under this one. There you have it, your funky pumpkin. <laughs>